to, uh, well, tell us, is it true you two are traveling the world? Is that right? Yes, it is. Correct. Correct. Yeah, yeah we started about uh, almost four years ago now, Dan. We were in the United States living in South Carolina, and Janice uh, has a little back problem, so we decided we were going to start traveling to places where we could live on a, a budget until we... Uh, either decided it's too much or or not. And so we started doing research and came up with a list of places where uh, the cost of living was appropriate and found a couple of resources and started watching you and found out about Numbio and found out about Vagabond Awake and a couple others. And uh, so we've been doing this for almost four years. We've been to Ecuador, Mexico, Dominican Republic, uh, Morocco, Western Europe last year. And now this year, we're making the rounds in Southeast Asia. Uh, wow. We are in the Philippines, as I believe you are. Hey, oh, I here. think we got you. Hey, it's great to meet you guys. So this is Dan of Vagabond okay. Awake. And today we have Nathan and Janice as guest stars on Vagabond Awake, and we're excited about it. It's good to meet it's you, to meet finally. You. Uh, we've been, like I say, we've been following you for a long time since uh, COVID. back when you were in Ecuador. Oh, I think cool. you were in Cotacachi and maybe one or two other places. Very cool. You're in the Philippines yeah. as well right now? Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. So how yeah. much time do you, do you typically spend in each place as you time-wise? We try to spend a, a month in each um apartment if we possibly can that helps with the uh helps with the budget and it also helps us feel feel for, for the, the um yeah for the area for the people yeah. for the culture cost of living everything and the climate as well depending on the time of the year we're there but uh so we try for a month sometimes we're successful sometimes we're not um like in the when we started out in salinas ecuador we got caught there in covid and so we ended up in the first apartment we went to for almost a year and a half i yeah. think wow. uh, which turned out to be just great salinas was wonderful for that but as soon as we could get moving we did wow amazing amazing so you sound like that you might be Slow travelers, how would you define slow travel? What would the words you use to define what slow travel is? Spending 30 to 90 days in one single place. Although I will tell you that was not our initial goal. Kind of setting up house, um, but instead of doing it every two weeks or every three weeks, doing it once every three months. Yeah, once a month is more realistic to what we actually do because... Um, well, a lot of times we end up with Airbnb and their rate changes dramatically when you get 28 days or more. And sometimes we'll go around and once we hit an area, we'll find um, somebody who a local who will rent us an apartment for even less than Airbnb will. And, and it's usually um, we usually end up with studios, um, you know, or, or a one bedroom. But it varies a little bit depending on, um, you know, the situation where we are. Great. So do you normally fly home after each destination you visit or do you more typically just move forward from where you are now to the next place you want to be without flying home? Move forward to the next place we want to be. We typically go back 10 to 14 days between Thanksgiving and Christmas, somewhere in there. So we, plan a, we plan a route for more or less a year in each area because there's a whole lot of areas that we want to see. Like this year, we figured we would start in northern Thailand, where we met uh, our youngest son for 45 days, spent our first 45 days with him in Chiang Rai. Then I had a vision of a north to northeast to east to southeast to south, a circle going around Southeast Asia and ending up back in Bangkok around November or so in time to make our yearly migration for a week to two weeks back to the United States. Not and I'll gather up information yeah. on high temperatures, rainy seasons, and economy, and kind of pick the best month to go to each place. But when it's we got sunny. to Hanoi, it was cold. Okay, so we said, we got to get back to the beach. So we went, because we had used our month up, and we also go a lot by how much time they allow you on a right. visitor's visa. We don't want to pay a lot for visa, just like one of the things you talk about, yeah. and we learned from you. So rather than spending the money to fly back to Bangkok and the same day go right back and buy another another visa from that from Vietnam, right. we just said, hey, if we're in Bangkok, let's just get another 45 days from Thailand and we'll go south to the beach there. So we went to Jom Chien Beach, 
which I know is yeah. one of Chung's favorite places. I've heard her say it a number mm-hmm. of times. And so we spent two months there. Yeah. And because of the weird 45 day thing this year that's now expired in Thailand, we went and extended it for 28 more days or 30, 30. whatever it was. Yeah. And so we had 15 days at the end of our two month rental. And so we went to Koh Chang, Koh Chang, the Elephant Island, and yeah. spent a couple of weeks there before we came to, before we moved on to um, the Philippines, where we are, Puerto yeah. Galera. Do you maintain an empty, well, you already said that you're from the Carolinas. Do you maintain an empty bed there um, while you travel? No, we yeah. sold everything car, furniture, yeah. tried to pawn off all of our household worth of stuff on the kids. They the kids don't want it. anything these they days. Were so we ended up with an auctioneer to get rid of most of it and got basically nothing from it. But that's yeah. okay. We'll we'll start out and have a new little a new time when we get back. We're gonna do this until we, we're not comfortable with it. Probably another two or three years we'll be a little tired of it. And then we plan on maybe going back to the United States and maybe buying an R V and doing a zigzag north to south, east to west for three or four years. And then when we're done with that, then I guess we're going to buy bricks and sticks again. And probably in Georgia or South Carolina or maybe maybe Florida, depending. But that's wow. that's the long range plan. Living and the dream. We just Living the dream. Out. Well, you've got the dream picture so. behind you and, and, and we have it right behind us as well. Yeah. Just right gorgeous. The same as yours yeah. with the yellow coconuts, the green coconuts nuts the swaying palms beautiful <laughs> ocean that we swim in every morning it's really quite the quite the life that we're, we're we've been privileged enough and blessed enough to have if you would like to learn how i fired my boss and traveled the world for 16 years and how i pay for things grab a free copy of my ebook so so where do you think you'll go uh, after you leave Southeast Asia over the next few years? Where do you think you'll head next? Well, we like to be warm. Got to start out with that. Okay. Yeah. We think our best bet for 2024 is start out in the Canaries. Right. It'll be pretty moderate there in end of December, January, February. Then right. because it's Schengen, we'll have to either go to Romania, Bulgaria, Probably that Serbia. Area, Serbia. Won't be, won't be Schengen at that point. Depending on who has become Schengen in that time. Right. Then um, bounce between there and Schengen, Czech Republic, Poland, just around that area. Um, and then finish off the last three in months Turkey. in Turkey. Yeah. Next year really was supposed to be Turkey and the Eastern Bloc. But yeah. because of Schengen and because of the temperature in January, February, um Tricky. you know it's just Tricky. we we can't start out in turkey it's just too cold we yeah. could i mean yeah. last year we ended up getting in a weird situation and ended up doing trusted house sitters right uh, here in western europe yeah. during england france spain yeah. portugal for that most of that year and wow. that it worked out cold. okay but it was cold yeah you yeah because we, we had intended last year to go over we had our flight from uh southeastern united states to lisbon and that it was supposed to be a hopper to Morocco. No. And Morocco just kept refusing to open. And so we, we took the flight anyway, because I always do that silly thing and buy non-refundable tickets and go from there. Uh, <laughs> so we ended up in Lisbon and had no place to go. So <laughs> what do we do from there? What do we do? So we ended up uh, hanging <laughs> around Europe. the Algarve for a month, which was a little cold but not too bad no. and then um somebody else on youtube had uh, said hey we're in the same situation and we're doing trusted house sitters so we did that for the year and uh, except for the last two months we did end up going to morocco for the last two months of we last did. year and got got to do that turns out we didn't even need two months for morocco in our opinion yeah, yeah. <laughs> a month would have been fine between three cities but yeah. it's it's all good we enjoyed it That's we got fine. our experience in yep and yeah. then we so- took a uh, a crew, a realigning cruise, Reloca- a relocation, yeah. a relocation cruise from Spain to Florida, and that's how oh. we got back. Yeah, I nice. found a cruise on Royal Caribbean doing relocation for the yeah. uh, for the winter season to the Caribbean, yeah. and it cost a little less than a flight than the flights back to the U.S. So we yeah. did that because wow. time is pretty much meaningless for us. We did twelve days doing that. And had a few wow. stops and gained even great, more weight on that thing. <laughs> great tip. Great tip. Um, so we hear and read in the media all the time about how dangerous the world is. Have you found that to be the case in your travels? No. no. 
the world is dangerous all over the world. As, as you've said before, and I've always felt this way, Every, you can get killed in any neighborhood in the world. If you, if you don't act right, if you don't pay attention to your surroundings, every city in the world has an area where if you go in after 10 o'clock at night, and that's late for me, yeah. I guess other people might say one or two in the morning, but if we go in there after 10 at night, you're running a big risk. Every city in the world, I don't care if it's Mayberry RFD or if it's London, Paris or Bangkok or Puerto Galera. Yeah. There are areas that you just have to be aware everywhere you go. If you're aware right. of your surroundings, you pay attention. The world's not a dangerous place. Most people are pretty darn good. So how many of these places have you been to? Are you getting visas so far? Um, we had to get a, a visa to live in Ecuador for two years. Okay. We had to get a visa to go to Vietnam. Yeah. Um, That's it. That was it. Yeah. We're so just funny. trying to avoid it. Like you, you know, we, we've heard you say it a number of times. Good oh, education. No. You know, the, the first 30 days was free here, but we yeah. had to pay for the second 29 days. Yeah. And so we did that already. Three places. Yeah. 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 And with the rainy season coming, we're thinking we'll go on to Kuala Lumpur. Uh, our next month is in Caron. Yeah. We've got a place rented for a month already. And, and thank you for that tidbit on where's the best snorkeling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and so after that, we'll go on to KL for probably a month right. or two because we'll be ready for a little city break at that point. Yeah. We we'll like to intersperse, you know, the city with the beach. Right. And then after that, we're really not sure. We may go a little further north to an island or finish out in uh, like Koh Samoy or Koh Tao. Uh, Koh Tao. Yeah. Yeah. In Thailand again Other to finish side. out the year. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Don't give up on your retirement dreams. Come check out our Retired Cheap Reports all over the world. You can probably retire somewhere in the world beautiful like this for much less than you thought. Thanks for watching. Click the link below this YouTube video. So, so from the movies and from, I don't know, popular uh, media or whatever it is, people have this idea that to be a world traveler like this, you're talking hundreds of thousand dollars a year. What kind of money would, if you're guessing, yep. what are you averaging per month or what are you averaging per year? Give people an idea of what it's like to eat the world like you're eating it. Sure. sure. Well, like I said, Janice has a degenerative back condition, so it stopped her from working a few years back. And she's still way younger than me and you, Dan. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we we decided we're gonna we're gonna try to live if we possibly can on my little Social Security, and I get a little pension. So about two thousand dollars a month if we can, and 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 that way we don't have to trust what I like to call the nut. We don't have to touch that if we don't, you know, if we you know we sold the house, so we. We have, a, we have a, a little bit of savings at home so that we'll be able to buy a decent house and live okay. But yeah. I, you never know how long you're going to live, so you never know how, how exactly. much money you're going to need. So I'm trying to make these these years of travel as inexpensive as possible right. without touching our savings at all. Very, live very within nice. our budget if we possibly can yeah. and, and make it a little more secure for the future. So, as I said, about 2000 a month. Now, a couple of years, we blew it a little bit, and I had to dip in for five or 10 or 15,000, something like that. But, you know, a lot of that depends on the travel mm -hmm. back to the United States and how long somebody wants to, stay. wants to stay and how special she wants to treat her to her daughters. <laughs> so if it's a $10,000 a week, then maybe I dip into my our savings a little bit for, for that week or so. But yeah. typically, like this year, because of Southeast Asia and because of a few other reasons, I haven't had to dip in at all so far. No. So it's been really good. good. I mean, the place we're we're in, as I said, Puerto Galera, a place called Bad Lads uh, Beach Resort. And we rented a condo, which isn't right on the water. It's 100 yards back from them yeah. for like $200 a month. I mean, it's just wow. ridiculous what you can find if you look. You know, yeah. we got to pay a little electricity on top of that. It's mostly the rent and the transportation that save us a whole lot of money. Yeah. We use public transportation everywhere we go. We sold our car that four years ago and we have no intention one. of buying another one until we settle into a house. Well, we'll have to buy a truck if we do the uh, RV thing eventually. But, uh, you know, you can do it fairly easily. Just look at your different resources that you have in all your different videos and your, and your book that you put out. You know, the Numbio thing, the WeatherSpark, um, use public transportation. 
Yeah. We don't we don't do a lot of touristy things, and we don't live yeah. in the tourist areas. We don't, but we do a fair amount of walking. We swim every day, at least once. She goes to a gym if there's one nearby, or she carries some stretchy bands with her so that she can try and keep her back so she can move a little bit at least. Um, and 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 that's really it. And just enjoy the culture, the food, the people. I mean, I'm finding the people in the Philippines to be the friendliest people I have ever encountered. And and the speaking English here it's really, really helps. Helpful. It's it's just it's a it's a nice change for us after quite a while of not hearing you know, not hearing the sound of English very much at all. Um, the people in Vietnam and Thailand were nice and I enjoyed it. The food was good, but hands down, Philippines. Philippines is 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 killing it. We've yeah. only been here two and a half weeks. We're loving this place. Yeah. Wow. You you've left your country now four years. Wow. You've been traveling around the world. What does it feel like? What does it feel like to to live like that? Perfectly normal to me now. Yeah. For you... the first two years, not so much. Um, it was it was odd to live in Ecuador. For I, I'm going to say for the first not two years, maybe maybe a little more than a year. Very, very settling to me. Just couldn't wait to keep going. Yeah, just couldn't wait. Couldn't, we toured Europe, that was terrific. And now doing this, it just seems very normal. It's just every day. This just, this is how we live. Yeah, this is we've it. settled this into it live. pretty nicely after all this time. It, yeah. it did take close to a year, but um, before mm -hmm. Janice and I got together, I had done a fair amount of traveling, you typical one week, two week vacations to Europe in the in the winter, and then yeah. uh, we're Europe in the summer, and then Caribbean for scuba diving in the in the winters. So the travel aspect of it and organizing the travel is always something. Um, being that old type A type A old man, I kind of enjoy organizing that that sort of thing. So, um, but it it took a little while to get used to being the full time thing. Uh, still wake up sometimes and go. Where, where the hell we? am I? Pardon my French <laughs> or whatever that was. And yeah. where's the bathroom? Where's the bathroom? <laughs> it's six o'clock in the morning and I and I need to find the bathroom. Where is it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. There are there are those days I still make it to six AM, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I guess you, you just have to well, you your needs need to be minimal. Yeah. Yeah. Um we just carry how a much few. how much stuff do you really need to have? Like we carry, tell them what we carry in, in our little gallon Ziploc bag. Yeah, I just, I, we carry the spices that we like to have. A um, few. A, a few, some tea, some coffee. And a um, red. And we, we the have silicone a, spatula. We have a few and a big spatulas. kitchen knife, like a French knife. Yeah, and, just a few and a peeler that we like. Yep. And a bot a wine opener, wine bottle opener, although yep. the wine in, in Southeast Asia is ridiculously expensive. So we haven't been using that wine opener very much. No. <laughs> but the bottle opener we have, because the beer here is pretty good. Beer's and good. uh and cheap. <laughs> beer's good and cheap. Red horse in, in Philippines. It's a good strong lager. It's lovely. Yeah, it's yeah. Lovely. so we carry a few little implements for the kitchen to make it a little easier on us and a few spices. You, you need to adapt to your cooking to what you have you know if the rent's 200 bucks and i spend 15 or 20 dollars <laughs> on a cheap saucepan and fry pan just to make our our, our cooking repertoire because uh, we easier. do cook two meals a day typically, typically at home and we either will have a snack or, or we'll eat eat lunch out or something um maybe four or five days a week frankly that's how how we like to start in a place is to just take the buses to the end of the route and use it get as off a walk bus. around and come back and that's our tour of and the next day, take another route and go out. Yeah. Some of the routes in, in Ecuador were, especially in Cuenca, wow. we were there for four or five months, I think. Yeah. And the routes into the mountains were just amazing. Um, 30 cents oh to take God. the bus, and it would travel 45 or 50 minutes up this mountain pass. Yeah. And you'd get off and find this little little store beside, like yeah. a sorry, sorry here. And and have a little snack, have a drink, get or back on the bus for a dollar, and back. And we had this great tour for six. Well, a dollar and twenty. I had to bring, yeah. I had to bring love of my life with me. Yeah. But I do find finding the maps of where the different routes go yeah. is difficult. The spirit I see is that you're discovering and adapting to a place rather than trying to go to a place. You're adaptable, and you're seeing things. Uh, 
with creativity. And I think that makes all the difference. You do have challenges, but there's an excitement. It's almost like an adventure. You know, it's like a puzzle you're trying to figure out in order to un- unravel yeah. a place yeah. and see what's interesting about it. So that's great. It's, it's like going to the public markets wherever we go. I mean, especially interesting in, um, in Hanoi and in Bangkok. Uh, just wow, so different. And to see all these different neat, right. cool vegetables and fruits. I come home with a fruit and I'm cutting it up and trying it and uh, um, taking oh. pictures and sending it to our kids. And this is oh. what we tried today. This is really some amazing, uh, yeah. this is dragon fruit and this is a uh, mango steam. Zoom's going to cut us off now. We're running out of time, but I really want to thank you for being on the chat channel. And uh, let's talk again soon. Let me know what you think of Corona. All right. We hey. certainly will. A All pleasure. Right. Happy to help out. Hope somebody gains some knowledge from it. Take care. I'm sure they will. Take care. Bye-bye. To travel the world for 14 years without getting a visa, click the video in the upper right-hand corner of your screen right now. Hey, if you liked our video, please like, comment, or subscribe. Any of that would help our business. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. <laughs>